Okay, so today we're going to talk about all the upgrade under the upgrades tree, under the gadgets tab. We're going to talk about all the different gadgets, uh, what each of them do, how they're best used, what which ones are the best, what are the advantage either way, and we're going to do a, a full coverage of every single one of these. So by the end of the video, you're going to have a full understanding of which gadgets are the best for you. All right, guys. So if you like what we're doing here, if you love our videos and you love our you know what we're doing on Twitch, uh, please use our supporter creator code. It goes a long way to helping us do what we're doing. And, and uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for all the support. You guys are awesome. Now, keep in mind, I am going to cover all of the fully upgraded versions of these abilities. Uh, there are lower level versions of these abilities that ha you'll have to look at um, and see, you know, at what stage, you know, what they do for you but I'm going to be talking about the max level versions and I will, I will refer to the, the basic you know, concept of how these things work. So even for low level players, you will understand which ones are you know, gonna be most effective for you. All right, let's get right into it. So we're gonna start with the first one, Adrenaline Rush. Uh, restores four, well, a bunch of health to you and friendly players in a three tile range. Purges negative effects, heals an additional uh, pile of health over five seconds and it revives downed allies this one here the uh, the max level upgrade for this ability is the revive so uh, adrenaline rush is always good it's a staple you get it right at the start of the game it's like the first thing you get um, and it's it's really good you know it's it's got a you know not a great cooldown 150 seconds is not spectacular but you know it's it's pretty good Right? You can heal you and you can heal your entire team. And at high levels, you can even revive everybody. So really, really solid, always good. Uh, I, I don't use this very often at high levels, honestly, because I I think that healing is a crutch and revive you know, can be good, but typically we have um, you know better options, you know, for uh, you know for, for guys getting knocked. You know, to, it's just it's just not something that I find super super useful at really high levels. But going through the game, um, it is actually quite effective. You know, so self heal is always always good. So then we have airstrike drops thirteen bombs, causing high damage per bomb in a designated area. Aim to change the shape of the targeted area. So this has a one hundred and fifty five second cooldown. So pretty much the same as the adrenaline rush. Uh, as you can see, this thing uh, hits a huge area. Uh, you can drop bombs and just blow the living tar out of everything. It does in immense damage. Immense damage. Inc just insanely powerful. So I barely ever use this ability. And my argument for why I don't really use this ability is because, you know, 155 second cooldown is a really, really big cooldown for an AoE clear. You know, there's... There's other ways to AOE clear that is a lot easier to use, easier to aim. Because this one, remember, you got to aim it. Uh, you know, it helps to have high ground. If you're at low ground, it's a lot harder to aim. Uh, you know, this watching her, she's standing on a ramp, looking down at enemies, able to get like the perfect angle to to blast these enemies. But that's rarely the way that this works out because it is on a delay. You have to. You have to select it, you have to choose the shape, then you have to, you know, drop the bomb, and then you have to wait for the bombs to actually drop. Um, in most cases, you miss a ton of enemies. Um, and the enemies that you do hit, you know, it, I don't know, it's, sometimes it's nice, but it's too inconsistent for me to, to find those moments where this is a relevant tool. Um, so I usually stay away from that. Next, we have the banner. The banner is amazing, just straight up. This one, I like to have one person on every team, or sorry, one one person on a team in every game that I play, somebody has to be using the banner because the banner is fantastic. You drop a banner healing all player built structures in a one tile radius. So it's a great way to heal your walls really hard. And what's the, the really the kicker is that it increases the building health to 250%. For 45 seconds now 45 seconds is the maxed out version of this ability uh, but it's really really strong uh, when you have like smashers coming at your your base or you have propane coming at your base um, you know you can throw you can see them coming in on the side they're coming in you can throw this down in front of the wall that you know they're going to hit and when they come in and they start dropping propane bombs 
you know, your buildings are packing 250% bonus health. Like it, you know, it's huge. Like it gives you the ability to soak some massive hits from propane and not lose anything. So really awesome ability. Um, at high levels, it creates a shockwave that deals damage in a 1.5 radius. Um, and the and the real big kicker is at high levels, the banner acts as a respawn point for friendly players, making the adrenaline rush pretty much obsolete. Uh, because you you can you you go down, eight seconds later you can respawn at the banner. Uh, it's just insane. Like you die and boom, you respawn right inside your own base in a safe zone. So it is incredible. It's a 300 second cooldown which is horrible, but honestly, you don't have to really, you only have to play this like maybe twice a match. You know, sometimes I'll place this when I'm going up against a really bad um, encampment or, or a storm chest uh, or, you know, something, something bad. And it gives me the ability to, to revive. And then by the time I go to do the main defense on the mission, I easily have this back up again. So the banner is top tier, just incredible, super awesome tool. Then of course we have the hover turret. This is my number one most used ability. Hover turret is just easy mode happiness. Deploys a stationary hover turret that fires enemy, uh, energy rounds at enemies within an 8 tile range at 6 rounds per second. Turret lasts for 30 seconds. An additional turret is added. Turrets deal damage to nearby enemies on death. Okay, so let's go over this. Basically, here's what is important about the turret. 150 second cooldown. So the more often you use it, the more often you get it. Typically... I don't use this willy-nilly. I use this only when I'm in super danger, like when I'm defending a pyramid and a wall goes down, I throw up a turret and then I start, I, I jump down and I start repairing the walls while the turret kills everything around me. Uh, the turret is incredibly powerful. You use turrets all the time whenever you do uh, storm chests. You open the storm chest, you wait a few seconds. As soon as the enemies start to spawn, you throw the turrets up and the turrets just go ape, smashing everything that comes at you. These things are incredible. Auto, auto aim, auto fire, um, hover weapons is just, just so powerful, so so powerful. It's got nerfed a bunch of times and is still absolutely the best, the best gadget in the game. <laughs> I don't think I ever go anywhere without the turret on, mostly because it really sucks to not have a turret when you're doing storm chests. You know, it's they're so nice. All right, so that's the hover turret, my number one pick. Proximity mine. Des deploy up to 10 proximity mines that will deal massive damage to all enemies within 1.25 tile range. So, as you can see, they come in, they blow up. You know, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, prox mines are very strong. Has a 60 second cooldown. And they're actually quite good. Back in the day, they there used to be only 3 or 4 prox mines that you could hold on to. Now it deploys up to 10 at high levels 60 second cooldown is a very reasonable amount of time compared to the other ones you know only a one minute cooldown instead of like a two and two and a half minute cooldown so super super good um i like the brox mines they're okay but honestly they just don't fit into my builds uh there's you know having having a turret is always my number one um and uh, my number two is actually the slow field the slow field is my number two ability because it is the ultimate anti um, anti mini boss weapon when you put the you you have a mini boss come over you wait till he gets all the way up to your base wall and he takes a swing at that wall and the second he does that you drop a, a slow field right behind him and he's not getting out of there right he's it he's gonna like he's gonna hit that wall over and over again super 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 slowly while you just tool the living face off of him you just blow the back of his head right off so this is a 180 second cooldown. It's one of the worst cooldowns, but honestly, you only ever need this maybe once or twice per game. And uh, it is a clutch, clutch ability. If you cycle one of one of these with every single other person on your team, everyone has one, um, you just never run out, right? These things just last forever. And it's just like, whew, it's good, man. It's good. Slow field is one of the, one of, if not the most, um, game influencing gadgets and in the like it's actually influences the game more than the, even though the hover turret is the easiest and the most convenient slow slow field can win you games single-handedly so slow field is just incredible it, it basically is my number two 
forever. <laughs> so that's why Proxmines doesn't get a lot of love, is because even though it's really, really strong, it's hard to justify, you know, dropping your your two best gadgets for Proxmines. Um, but again, it's personal preference too, right? Uh, Proxmines are definitely awesome. They're awesome. So now there. Are, this is the supply drop. Uh, call in a supply drop that uses, or uh, includes 85 wood, 85 stone, 85 metal. Drops at least one crafting item. Drops at least one plank or twine. Drops at least one rough ore powder. Drops at least one mechanical part or nuts and bolts. Drops at least one trap and ammo. So this gives you a great diversity of loot. And it's really convenient. And I only ever use this when I'm doing farming on my Immortal Farmer Archaeologist build. But when I'm using her, I guarantee you, Supply Drop is on my line. Because when I'm farming, this is a fantastic farming tool. It's got oh, the worst cooldown in the universe. 330 seconds is awful. But it's still, you know, it's it's great. Honestly, it's I love it. I love all those materials, um, all the crafting supplies. You know, it's really good for just adding that little bit extra. You know, when you're going really, really fast and you're hunting, gathering, and doing all this stuff, this is just more, 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 more for no extra effort. You just drop it, loot it, and go. So I love the supply drop, and I've used it many times, and I will continue to use it many, many times. <laughs> teleporter. Oh, man, the teleporter. Here is the weirdest, coolest, most least used um, <laughs> object in the game. So, as you can see, he puts it in front of him, a propane throws into the teleportation, and he's got a teleporter set up on the, on the hill, up in the corner, and it goes through the teleporter and then comes out the side and shoots right into that guy. So, it ends up blowing him up and blowing up the, uh, the, te the teleportation pad. So, blowing up the teleportation pad is a real bummer because it has a two minute cooldown, 120 seconds. And if it blows one of the sides up, then this won't work anymore until you're able to reset it. So the way this works is deploy two teleportation pads, which can be moved up to 30 tiles away from one another. So it's got a pretty good range at max level. Step on one to travel to the other. So instantaneous, uh, tele you know, inst instantaneous teleportation, instant travel. Um, arms 1.5 seconds after placement. Teleport pads can uh, teleport friendly projectiles. Uh, reduces the time it takes to pick up a teleport pad to 0.5 seconds. That's a high level upgrade. Uh, teleportation pads can't teleport enemy projectiles. But obviously that doesn't count when it comes to... Uh, oh, teleportation pads can teleport enemy projectiles. Yes, like the, um, the propane. So now the number one thing that I have used this for was actually during Frost Night. Um, if you set up a, a clever design like you see on the screen right here um, where things that go through you know go flying out and then off of a cliff off of an edge you can go and you can actually do the same thing but go up really really high into a safe area that has a straight shot you know falls to the ground in a safe place it doesn't affect anything and then what you do is you take the teleporter uh, take the teleportation pad around put it close to a um a propane tank and then use your pickaxe to knock the propane tank into the teleporter where it teleports away to safety and blows up somewhere that isn't going to hurt your base so for me teleportation pads are the uh, the, the the hoovers of propane <laughs> it's the greatest anti-propane disposal system ever and uh, that's what we used it for that's pretty much the only thing we've ever use this for uh the pro there's lots of little dumb tricks that you can do with the teleportation pad but honestly the teleporter is not that useful and outside of really extreme circumstances we never ever use it unless we're just having fun messing around so there you go guys there is all of the upgrades every single gadget uh which ones are the best of the best which ones are you know not so great <laughs> which ones are situational um yeah I really hope you find this uh, found this helpful. I've been I was asked this question on my Twitch chat again. They really wanted to know which of the gadgets was the best, and uh, how to how to utilize them fully. And uh, you know, as a low player or a high level player, you know, it's it's nice to know exactly how to fully utilize every single trick in your arsenal. So big thanks to the Vashcore 
Thank you guys so much for being a part of my my life and supporting what we're doing here on Twitch and on on YouTube and giving me you know so many questions to uh, to turn into videos. You know we're out here over 18 hours a day streaming our faces off on Twitch seven days a week, no days off, rocking the 81 hour marathons with the help of my wife every single weekend. We're here streaming, save the world all day, every day, guys. So come and hang out with us. Come and be a part of the Vash Core. And uh, yeah, <laughs> keep me company. Play some games. Have some fun. <laughs> all right, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up. Ring that little bell and comment down below let me, letting me know which of these are your favorite gadgets. Um, yeah, thank you so much for... for you know, giving those thumbs up and those comments and stuff, guys. It really, really helps us get more attention on YouTube. It helps us grow and it means the world, man. Thank you so much for being a part of my world, guys. I'll see you in the next video.